Um, hello, um, welcome to our analysis of uh, cellular differentiation in a, in, a, in a plant, taking advantage of uh, the, the, the system uh, provided by grass leaves, cereal leaves, in, the, in this case a wheat leaf. Uh, plant development involves uh, not embryogenesis, when plants are embryos and then just growth, Plant development happens continuously throughout the plant's life. And this allows us to catch uh, from the youngest uh, stages of cell differentiation, say stem cell like cell, until a fully differentiated cell. Uh, being interested both in cellular differentiation and in organelle uh, differentiation in chloroplast biogenesis, uh, we decided to tackle uh, how those two processes take place in a green ear wheat leaf. Uh, for that, we uh, took advantage of a young leaf, the first leaf of wheat of a six-day-old seedling, in which you can see, uh, it's very easy to see, uh, very pale cells and fully green cells. Uh, after uh, uh, background work um, carried out over years by, by other labs, uh, uh, some preliminary work for, uh, from us, we decided on a, a series of dissections, series of stages that we should target uh, for analysis. <coughs> and we took the young leaf uh, from its earliest stages until what we consider was probably fully differentiated. Just in case, this is a six-day-old leaf, we also used uh, a tubicle, the same leaf, and uh, uh, took a sample in the completely fully developed uh, stage. We uh, complemented that with uh, this uh, sample here. What is this sample here? Uh, this leaf is emerging from what was the seed. Actually, that is where the, the pool of stem cells, what in plants is called a meristem, uh, which is forming new leaves, is present. And that meristem here is surrounded by what will be uh, leaves, uh, uh, this will be leaf 3, 4, leaf, three, uh, leaf uh, 5, leaf 6. You can barely see them there. So these youngest leaf primordia, uh, less, than, uh, less than 500 microns, as well as the dome in the very center of stem cells, we also took them. We couldn't dissect them any further and we call this the, the shoot apical uh, sample containing the meristem. And what did we do with these samples? We subjected them to a series uh, of uh, cellular and organelle analysis. Uh, we observed them through microscopy and carried out a, a detailed quantitative analysis of cellular differentiation, both the cells and the chloroplasts in them, focusing on the main type of cell, the most abundant type of cell, occupying about two-thirds of the leaf, which is the mesophyll cell, the photosynthetic cell, the chloroplast containing cell. Cellular analysis through quantitative microscopy, uh, cellular cell cycle analysis uh, through uh, analysis of the amount of DNA in nuclei, what is called flow cytometry, uh, an analysis of global gene expression in those uh, cells, uh, the RNA of those cells, all the genes which are active, RNA collected and analyzed through high throughput RNA sequencing, a map of every gene in wheat, how it is, whether it is, and how much it is expressed along those stages, as well as how the, the DNA itself uh, changed. Remember, DNA is also present in cells, not just in the nucleus, but in mitochondria and chloroplasts. So that will, uh, allowed us to see whether chloroplast DNA accumulated. And finally, uh, an analysis of uh, total proteins, a few marker proteins we targeted. Hello everyone, my name is Priyanka. I'm doing PhD in Dr. Lobe's lab. And we are interested in learning leaf development. So uh, today we are going to share one of uh, our uh, studies. And uh, so when we put seed under the soil, what we see first is shoot apical meristem and uh, due to constant division of cell uh, the shoot apical meristem uh, uh, becomes a fully mature leaf 
So uh, we wanted to know what happens in the uh, wheat leaf gradient, what is the cell size, size progression. So uh, we used the samples uh, right from the shoot apical meristem as you can see the sample 1 and then 2 to sample 9 is 5 millimeter sections and then uh, 10 to 14 they are the 10 millimeter sections. So uh, we did flow cytometry analysis and uh, we found that in sample 2, uh, first, and, uh, first and second sample, there's a lot of uh, DNA synthesis indicating that uh, cell cycle is in progression. And uh, uh, even in third sample, there's a, a DNA synthesis phase. And after that, you don't see any DNA synthesis. It's just the differentiation. So after the uh, DNA synthesis, after the division of cell cycles, that goes to different forms based on the plant development and the environmental cues, for example, mesophyll cell, bundle sheet cell, etc. etc. So uh, we wanted to check. Uh, so this is the uh, regulator of cell cycle. It's called a retinoblastoma related protein. So immunoblot analysis, we found that this RBR protein is present from sample 1 to sample 6 and 7. And this is inactivated by phosphate group. So when it is phosphor phosphorylated, uh, this inhibitor is inactivated and cell cycle is in its progression. As you can see, the pink color is indicated by the S phase. That means the division is, cell division is there. And um, so uh, from our global gene expression data, uh, we obtained some of the important cell divisional genes, as you can see, and they are expressed highly in first three samples. So, yeah, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Naresh Lodia. I'm a postdoctoral research associate. Uh, I'm working with Dr. Lopez. So, uh, in this picture here, we are showing you the microscopy uh, analysis, cells obtained through DIC microscopy. As you can see, the sample sections numbered as 1 to 15. Mesophyll cells in this picture uh, are taken along the leaf gradient uh, of the wheat leaf analysis that was mentioned earlier. So, uh, what we see is that uh, when you look at the cells at the base, particularly uh, one, two, three, uh, the cells are much smaller and mostly filled with the nucleus. Um, the cells tend to slightly change in their shape and the increase have this lobed uh, shapes or uh, gradually they attain these lobes uh, when we move towards the tip. Plastids accumulate very early from as you can see the maximum number of plastid count is in sample 7. Uh, till this point we barely see any greening. It is worth mentioning that rapid changes take place at the base of the leaf while um, towards the tip very minimum uh, changes take place. So at the base, rapid changes take place at uh, very small distances. Uh, so the microscopy data shows us uh, cells at the tip are fully packed with chloroplasts, this big and green chloroplasts here. Uh, one could clearly see this and correlate this with the greening pattern, gradual greening of the leaf, uh, that the tip is fully uh, packed with the chloroplasts. Um, only a sample 7 uh, has the maximum number of uh, uh, Plastids. Uh, this indicates that the division of chloroplastids happening at the base and uh, there is any uh, greening at this stage. So the greening happens after this stage. So one can see chloroplasts increasing in size and then gradually greening uh, from sample 8 uh, towards the tip. Um, so we have now seen uh, how cells are behaving in, in, the, in terms of how the cell cycle is progressing. We have seen how organelle differentiation is happening uh, along those cells. We carried out a global gene expression analysis uh, at the same time. And of course, we could uh, look at a whole range of uh, processes that were taking uh, place uh, during that uh, cell life history. Uh, what does a global gene expression uh, mean? Uh, it means uh, one extract RNA, 
uh, copy it as, as cDNA and then uh, sequence, high throughput sequence uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of uh, copies of uh, cDNA obtained from one sample. And so the number of times that you uh, sequence a particular uh, cDNA, the cDNA of a particular gene, gives, a, gives you an idea of how active this gene was, how many copies of mRNA uh, were being produced, therefore how active that gene was. And uh, the data you obtain are uh, ginormous, they're, they're uh, mind-bogglingly large, and they need to be analyzed computationally. So you can ask a, a, a computer to do a statistical test, a principal component analysis of the different samples. We obtain each sample in triplicate. And the computer tells you, uh, actually, these samples, you see the three triplicates map super clearly. These uh, samples, uh, their variances can be mapped along these two axes, or if you have a third axis, along these three axes and you see the progression of differentiation from the first, second, third, fourth, etc., etc., until sample 15. Uh, the samples represent very different stages of life uh, history. You can, you can uh, find what genes uh, create the, have the greatest influence in where samples are positioned, and you can see that the first component represents metabolism, bios biosynthesis, versus photosynthesis at the beginning or at the end. The second component represents uh, a stage at which, a stage in the middle, at which plastic organization is happening. As it so happens, cell wall is also being synthesized. The cell, the third component, which accounts for much less of the brains, uh, represents uh, protein transport processes that begin to uh, set on in cells that are becoming old, which, which will become senescence, removal of material for younger cells. And we can also uh, cluster those genes, uh, this is what we call a heat map. Uh, we can represent how each gene is expressed through uh, a value, a z-score, that represents whether it is expressed at high or low levels relative to other samples, and visualize that as color. Red means high, blue means low for each gene. And you can cluster the genes in in patterns, a computer identifies genes with similar patterns uh, that peak at different stages of the 15 samples. And then you can also use computational approaches to identify what process, what types of gene show this kind of pattern, or this kind of pattern, or this kind of pattern. And then you see that a whole, a whole set of control processes, transcription control, as well as cell cycle, was happening in the meristem on the very base of the leaf. Uh, later on, uh, cell growth was happening, ribosomal protein genes. Uh, later on, um, a, a cell wall was building up. Later on, plastic growth, plastic ribosomal protein genes were building up, etc., etc. Only at the end, photosynthetic genes were turned on, only in the, in the samples yeah, 8 onwards there. So, uh, we have a global view of cellular differentiation, which includes organelle differentiation. In it. Uh, we won't go uh, through all the details, but this is the kind of summary you, uh, you come up with. Uh, uh, you look at what uh, cellular processes are happening, and the primary cellular processes are cell proliferation, cell cycle, then cytoplasmic growth translation, the buildup of new materials, uh, new proteins which are built uh, in, the, in the protein building factories which are ribosomes right? and then cell expansion which is associated with the build up of the cell wall in which it, each plant cell is encased and you can look at, at the organelle processes uh, focus on the chloroplast processes and you see again these two stages uh, the, the, the plastic proliferation uh, which plastic proliferation which accompanies DNA replication in the chloroplast, uh, which accompanies uh, the, the, the import of uh, proteins producing the cytosol into the uh, developing organelle, etc., uh, etc., et what you could call plastic build-up processes. Uh, plastids are built before they become photosynthetic. And then there is this uh, second uh, stage 
in which the build-up of the photosynthetic apparatus uh, takes place. Uh, we can see it visually by the cells greening and and uh, cells, mesophyll cells, become active at what they do, at what they do, which is uh, act as solar panels filled with solar cells, producing the food, uh, the wheat, the bread, the, the, the pasta, the etc., etc., everything which uh, uh, cereals, wheat, or all crop plants give us. Uh, my name is uh, Enrique Lopez. Uh, I am uh, very fortunate to share the lab with with. Uh, Naresh Lodia, Priyanka Mish Mishra, uh, Dr. Lodia, uh, uh, Mishra, uh, uh, postgraduate student uh, in the lab, uh, who are uh, co first authors of the publication in which uh, this is being put in the public domain. Thank you very much.